one of the NFL season was insane, really exciting. And we're going to start out with the first game, Thursday Night Football, the Eagles versus the Falcons. I already made a video of this, but I'm still going to include it in the um, Week 1 outlook and scores and highlights and stuff. But I can't show any highlights or any video clips from the games because otherwise this video will be copyrighted and striked down. So I'm just going to talk about it, basically like a podcast type thing like I've always been doing for my videos now. And the game started out pretty slow, a real defensive battle. And it started out with a couple field goals, and by halftime it was only 6-3 to three with the Falcons leading. And then Jay Ajayi finally punching it in with a one-yard run in the third quarter, making it 10-6. to six. But long behold, after some struggles offensively for both teams, Tevin Coleman runs it in. And then towards the end of the game, Jay, Haja, Jay Ajahi gets another rushing touchdown. So the Eagles get an 18-12 lead. And then on the last drive of the game, the Falcons are going down the field. Matt Ryan throws it to the corner of the end zone. And Julio Jones caught it, but couldn't bring both feet in bounds as Ronald Darby pushed him out of bounds. Good defense by the Eagles. Amazing defense by the Eagles, in fact. Um, just a really good game. Kind of sloppy too, because each the Eagles had two turnover. Well, not even the turnovers. That was pretty good, but the third down conversions. Atlanta was four for fifteen, and Philadelphia was eight for sixteen. That's not bad. And then for penalties, the Falcons committed fifteen penalties, and the Eagles committed eleven. And most of those penalties for both teams were all in the first half. And that's why it was sloppy, not really because of anything else. And a lot of fumbled snaps. They did recover them, of course. The defense didn't scoop up, scoop them up or anything. Just a lot of fumbled snaps and messed up handoffs that were going on during the course of the game. And, yeah, just Atlanta getting four sacks, Philadelphia getting two. But Philadelphia had way more hurries and quarterback hits than the Falcons ever, ever got in this game. It was just crazy how good the Eagles' defense did. Stats-wise, you won't see it. I mean, one interception and four sacks, was it, for the Eagles? And you're like, oh, wow. It's pretty impressive. But what really stands out is the insane amount of quarterback hurries and quarterback hits they put on them, the pass deflections they had. The Eagles just played really well. It was a great defensive battle by both teams. Kind of sloppy on the offensive end, but a very good game still as the Eagles pulled, pulled out the win 18-12. to And let's go into the next one. Baltimore Ravens. This game was insane. The Baltimore Ravens just destroying Buffalo 47-3. to I knew Baltimore was going to pull, pull out the win, but... I thought it was going to be by like two touchdowns, not 47 to 3. Nathan Peterman, named the starting quarterback, which I thought was a mistake from the beginning, got benched for a horrible play, took three sacks, threw two interceptions for 24 yards. I don't even know why he was named starter. Was threw five for 18. I thought his play last year um, should have just made got him cut. But for some reason, they held on to him, and he played horrible again. And, yeah, <laughs> they went with Josh Allen. He performed better than Peterman, but he still played bad. And not much to look at the running game. Nothing there either. Um, their best runner, Marcus Murphy, 6 carries for 31 yards. McCoy had 7 for 22 um, all around, it was a horrible offensive game for the Bills. And Joe Flacco putting on a performance. 236 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. And then you had guys like John Brown, who I thought was a great signing, getting a touchdown. Willie Sneed, an underrated signing, getting a touchdown, 49 yards. Crabtree showing out. Um, just the Ravens looked like a complete team out there. And defensively, the Bills' defense, I don't, I don't know. When your offense is playing that bad, there's nothing 
it doesn't matter how good your defense is. When your offense is as, is as bad as the Bills right now, it doesn't matter who you have. There's really nothing you can do. <laughs> they did get a couple sacks. Tremaine Edmonds got one. Trent Murphy and Kyle Williams each helped on a sack. Um, Tremaine Ed Edmonds also got a forced fumble. He had a great um, first game to start out his career. He had three tackles, four assisted tackles, one forced fumble, and a sack. So a, a really good game by the rookie Tremaine Edmonds. Then let's look at the Ravens' defense. They played amazing. Brandon Carr getting an inter interception. Tony Jefferson getting an interception. Um, Zadarius Smith, Terrell Suggs, Tim Williams, and Kenny Young all with sacks. And then Tavon Young had two sacks. The Baltimore Ravens defense just ate these guys up. It was insane. And even in punt returning... Well... No, there's not much there. But just a great game by the Ravens. Just completely took over and destroyed the Bills. Again, final score was 47-3. Ravens with the win. Followed a slim win. 20-15. to Really surprised me. I thought the Jaguars would win by a bit more. But it does remind you that the Giants still do have talent. And Saquon Barkley is a game changer. As in the late fourth quarter, he got a 68-yard touchdown run, and it wasn't only that run, he had a phenomenal game. 18 carries, 106 yards, and a touchdown, with two receptions for 22 yards in his first ever game. Um, just phenomenal. He played like a superstar back in his first ever NFL game. I don't really count preseason, so... And Leonard Fournette getting 9 carries for 41 yards and got injured and taken out of the game. Otherwise, I'm pretty sure the Jaguars probably would have won by more if he would have um, been in the whole game and stayed healthy. Odell Beckham Jr. went off against Jalen Ramsey. He had 11 receptions for 111 yards. But Ramsey still played decent, getting 4 tackles and an assist to tackle. You can't really see the pass deflection. Miles Jack got an interception with seven tackles. Um, Barry Church had six tackles. Then on the Giants defense, the real main guy was Janoris Jenkins out there getting five tackles and an interception. Um, really playing good. Landon Collins with four tackles. Um, this was a pretty good game, but of um. The line didn't really hold up that well for the Giants. They did play good still, but if they could have just protected Eli a little bit more, the Giants probably would have pulled out the the win. The Giants had more total yards. Um, they had a few less rushing yards, but they had a lot more passing yards than the Jaguars, which is expected expected because of Blake Bortles. And yeah, Jaguars with the win there. Buccaneers at the Saints. The Buccaneers won 48 to 40 in overtime. It was a huge offensive shootout. At one point, the Buccaneers had a 31 to 14 lead, and the Saints ended up coming back and they had to go to overtime. But in the end, the Buccaneers prevailed and ended up winning 48 to 40. Ryan Fitzpatrick looked better. He was playing. He played better than Drew Brees. Had 417 yards and four touchdowns. On 21 for 28 throwing. And then he had a rushing touchdown on top of it. Mike Evans had 7 receptions, 147 yards, and a touchdown. And Deshaun J Jackson had 5 receptions, 146 yards, and 2 touchdowns. The running game for both teams were not really there. But who needs a running game when you have Ryan Fitzmagic outplaying Drew Brees the, and the Buccaneers defense? played better than the Saints defense um, just a really surprising game amazing game last year and here in week one it was a weird game um, in, the, in the first half the Patriots were just killing them 21 to 6 I thought it was over the offensive line for Houston couldn't block anybody 
they wouldn't they couldn't allow Deshaun Deshaun Watson couldn't do anything because his offensive line was so bad. The running backs couldn't run because the line was so bad. It was horrible. The Patriots were just killing them because of that line. But then in the second half, the Texans made quite a comeback by scoring 14 and only holding the Patriots to 6. But they did end up losing 27 to 20. Patriots got the win. And Deshaun Watson had an okay game, but the real factor was Tom Brady. 277 yards, 3 touchdowns, and a pick. The versatility on this team is amazing. Jeremy Hill had 4 carries for 25 yards, had a reception for 6 yards, and a blocked punt. Um, Jeremy Hill, an insanely good running back, very versatile. They used him on special teams everywhere. And these are two... Um, battling defenses as the Texans had two sacks and the Patriots had four yep I believe it was that or no three my bad Patriots had three sacks and the Texans only had two and the Texans got two interceptions while the Patriots no, Texans got one interception while the Patriots got one interception as well. And it was a really cool game. The defensive line did really well for the t for both teams, especially the Patriots. But that's because Houston's offensive line couldn't do a thing. And Tyron Matthew played really good. Three tackles, a fumble recovery, and an interception. Then you had Kareem Jackson, cornerback, moved to safety. He played insanely good, getting eight tackles and two forced fumbles. And Whitney Mercillus was back healthy. Jadavon Clowney didn't really see much of Watt. He had two tackles. Um, then on the Patriots side, you had Trey Flowers with one and a half sacks and Dietrich Wise with one and a half sacks. And then Stephon Gilmore with seven tackles and an interception. And both teams... Uh, both teams punted six times. Um, Patriots kicker had a booming punt. 55 yarder was his longest. 46.8 yards per punt. I mean, Ryan Allen, a very good punter. But yeah, just the way the game went, how the Patriots just dominated in the first half. And Houston came back, but they did end up losing still. Good game. Patriots pulled out 27-20. to Winning 24-16. to But the Vikings were dominating all game long. And then towards the end, the 49ers scored twice with Garoppolo throwing a touchdown and then a field goal by Robbie Gold. And that's why it was so close. Otherwise, really the Vikings just dominated the whole game. They used clock management really well. It really wasn't close and Jimmy Garoppolo just got destroyed first game of the regular season was through 15 for 33 261 yards one touchdown and three interceptions getting sacked three times his offensive line was terrible and his receivers played really bad as well then you have Kirk Cousins who really impressed me throwing for 244 yards and two touchdowns and he got sacked three times which really surprised me I didn't think the 49ers were gonna get to him that many times um, Delvin Cook played really well in my opinion Stefan Diggs and Adam Thielen doing their things what they usually do and then you have the defense DeForest Buckner two and a half sacks he really just came in here and he dominated this Vikings own line um, he also had three tackles as well. Um, not really much else impressive with that 49ers defense. I guess Fred Warner with 11 tackles. Then you get the Vikings defense. Collectively a good team. Half sack for Everson Griffin and Sheldon Richardson. One sack for Daniel Hunter and one for Harrison Smith. An interception for Mike Hughes, which was a pick six. Um, and he's a rookie. An interception for Harrison Smith and an interception for Xavier Rhodes. Harrison Smith 
was amazing. He had seven tackles, a sack, an interception, and a fumble recovery. Oh, and that also mentioned that Linville Joseph had a forced fumble. The Vikings defense was just too much for this young 49ers team. And the Vikings, and again, the end score was Vikings 24, 49ers 16. I knew I should have picked the Dolphins because here they ended up winning 27 to 20. Um, really, just kind of a weird game here too. Ryan Tannehill played. Um, he played pretty good over everybody's expectations. Through 20 for 28, 230 yards, two touchdowns, and two interceptions. But then let's look at the real story. Marcus Mariota was playing real. He was playing kind of bad. 9 for 16. Okay, that's not that's not horrible. That's pretty good. But two interceptions. That's really horrible there. And he really couldn't get anything going for their offense either. He couldn't move him anywhere on the field. He ended up getting injured. Blaine Gabbert came in. Played a little better, but he just couldn't get the offense moving either. Deion Lewis ran pretty good. 16 carries for 75 yards and a touchdown. Derrick Henry did not impress me at all. He played pretty bad as well. Um, otherwise, the Dolphins, Frank Gore played amazing. He ran very well. And then you had Kenny Stills having a breakout game. Four receptions, 106 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, I never expected Kenny Stills to play that good in one game. And then on the defensive side of the ball, the Titans defense played like they should have. Camille Correa getting a sack. And then everybody else, Malcolm Butler with an interception. And then the Dolphins, you had Kiko Alonso getting a, a six tackles and a pick. Rashad Jones getting four tackles and two interceptions. And he returned that for a total of 80 yards. Um, he gave the Dolphins offense great field position off of both of his interceptions. Great defense by Miami, more than anything. Their offense did play good, but it was mainly their defense. Um, Miami was just held for less total yards. They were forced more tur to turn it over more. But Miami's third down conversions, 2 for 10. I'm not really sure how you can win a game on 2 for 10 third down conversions, but they did it. They did it, and it, it impressed me. This was a really good game. Andrew Luck finally back from injury. They gave him a good tight end in Eric Ebron. And they had a huge lead. 23-10, late in the third quarter. And then the Bengals went off. Andy Dalton threw a touchdown to A.J. Green. And then in the fourth quarter, Mixon ran one in. And then, yeah... Bengals ended up winning 34-23. to They made a fourth quarter comeback. Andy Dalton had an amazing game. 21 for 28 throwing. 243 yards, two touchdowns, and a pick. Joe Mixon had 17 carries for 95 yards and a touchdown. He also had five receptions for 54 yards. Then you had A.J. Green, who had six receptions for 92 yards and a touchdown. Tyler Eifert. Three receptions, 44 yards. Tyler Boyd, three receptions for 26 yards. And then, Andrew Luck played really good in his first game back, getting 319 yards, two touchdowns, one interception. And they did not have a run game at all. Nobody could run for the Colts. I mean, it was terrible. And the receiver that really stood out for them, I'd say was tight end Eric Ebron getting four receptions for 51 yards and a touchdown. T.Y. Hilton also played pretty good with five receptions for 46 yards and a touchdown. But Eric Ebron really impressed me. And then defense. Geno Atkins had three tackles and a sack. Um, Preston Brown had five tackles and an interception. A sack for Carlos Dunlap. Clayton Fegidellum had nine tackles, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and a touchdown. He returned that fumble recovery for a touchdown, winning the game for the Bengals. Um, 
huge player there, player of the week, in my opinion, Clayton Fegedilum. I don't even know how to say his name. Um, okay, maybe not player of the week, but he had a hell of a game. I just can't believe how good he played. And then, yeah, the Colts defense played pretty good. Matthias Farley and Clayton Gathers, the two safeties getting a forced fumble each. But Gathers getting seven tackles, really impressive. Lake Hooker getting four tackles. Margus Hunt, who used to be on the Bengals, was a Colt, is a Colt now, got two sacks in a revenge game against the Bengals. Darius Leonard got a fumble recovery and six tackles. And Kenny Moore had an interception, returned it for 32 yards. So yeah, the Colts were playing amazing, and then I don't know what happened. They just couldn't do anything there for a while, and the Bengals ended up winning. Like I said, the Browns are a good team. They improved so much in the offseason. In the fourth quarter alone, the Browns scored 14 points and a nice 17-yard pass from Tyrod Taylor in the um, corner of the end zone to Josh Gordon for the game-tying touchdown. I mean, this was an amazing game. I don't really know how to put it. It did end in a, t end in a tie, 21-21. to Ben Roethlisberger, 335 yards, one touchdown, but three interceptions, got sacked four times, and fumbled it twice. Um, ben Roethlisberger played horrible. Then you had James Conner, the backup running back, replacing Le'Veon Bell since he's holding out. James Conner played like a pro bowler, 31 carries, 135 yards, two touchdowns, five receptions, and 57 yards. Juju Smith and Antonio Brown had huge games, of course, like they usually do. Then you had Tyrod Taylor playing up to his usual standard, getting a passing and a rushing touchdown each. Carlos Hyde with a rushing touchdown. Then you had Jarvis Landry, seven receptions for 106 yards. Just amazing. And Josh Gordon, only one reception. 17 yards and a touchdown, and that was the game-tying touchdown. Um, really saved the Browns from losing it. Amazing play by Josh Gordon. I'm surprised they didn't target him more. Um, they only targeted him three times. Then on the defensive side, the Steelers' defense was pretty good. Um, you can't, I can't lie. Jonathan Bostic, five tackles in a sack. Bud Dupree, four tackles in a sack. Cameron Hayward, five tackles in a sack. And then the major one, TJ Watt, JJ Watt's younger brother, eight tackles and four sacks. I mean, he played insanely good. Oh yeah, Bud Dupree also had a forced fumble. Cameron Sutton had an interception. Steelers defense didn't play bad at all. They played really good. It's just the Browns got a lot better, like I've been saying. Then Jernard Avery, rookie linebacker. I I know I knew he was gonna be good. Three tackles, a forced fumble, and a sack in his first game. Then we have Miles Garrett, five tackles, two sacks, and two forced fumbles. Just insanely good how Miles Garrett did. He played amazing. Then we have Jabril Peppers, three tackles and a fumble recovery. Joe Schobert, two tackles, six assisted tackles, and two fumble recoveries. And then Denzel Ward, the rookie cornerback, first round pick, two tackles, four assisted tackles, and two interceptions. This was a really good game, ending in a tie. The Browns should have won it. They went down the field. Went for the game-winning kick, and it got blocked by the Steelers. But both defenses played amazing. The Steelers had to punt seven times, and the Browns had to punt 12. Um, just an amazing game. It was personally one of my favorites in Week 1. The Chiefs beat the Chargers 38-28. to I expected the Chargers to win. And... 
Patrick Mahomes played a lot better than I thought. Um, I thought he was way overhyped. I thought, I don't know, I guess I should have watched Patrick Mahomes myself. Because he played amazing. 256 yards, 4 touchdowns, no picks. But it does help when you have a top receiver in the league like Tyreek Hill getting 7 receptions, 169 yards, and 2 touchdowns. And Tyreek Hill also got a kick, re uh, no, a punt return touchdown. My bad. So yeah, Tyreek Hill, easily one of the best players in the league right now. Um, three total touchdowns, two receiving, one on a punt return. He had a phenomenal game. The rushing game wasn't really good. I'm surprised Kareem Hunt didn't play better. Spencer Ware did run really well in his three small carries that he got. Phillip Rivers, of course, had an amazing game. 424 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick. Melvin Gordon was held. He didn't really get anything on the ground. But he did get nine receptions for 102 yards. Same with Austin Eckler. The, um, he played pretty good, getting five receptions, 87 yards, and a touchdown. Keenan Allen, eight receptions, 108 yards, and a touchdown. And Mike Williams, the second-year receiver from Clemson, getting 5 receptions for 81 yards, had it, having an injury-riddled season last year, coming back strong. Then on the defensive end, for the Chiefs, D. Ford had a sack, and Ron Parker had an interception. I really like Ron Parker. He's a great safety. And then on the Chargers' end, we have J.J. Jones, got a fumble recovery. Derwin James, the rookie, out of Florida State had a sack and not really much there for the Chargers defense other than kind of really underwhelming I'm really surprised Casey Hayward and Desmond King and Trevor Williams really didn't shut down a young quarterback like Patrick Mahomes but I guess he he's living up to the hype so far Denver pulls out a narrow win, 27-24. to This was a really good game, but like I predicted, the Broncos' defense was just too much for Seattle's offensive line. Um, Russell Wilson did play okay, 298 yards, 3 touchdowns, 2 picks, but he just got gobbled up, getting sacked 6 times. Um, just insane how bad their offensive line is. And... A surprise player, Will Disley, on the Seahawks, getting three receptions, 105 yards, and a touchdown. Then we have Case Keenum. Played worse than a lot of people expected, except me. I expected him to play like this. He played mediocre, like I thought he would. 329 yards, three touchdowns, and three interceptions. Um, Not really much on the ground. The run game wasn't really doing it. But Emmanuel Sanders had 10 receptions, 135 yards, and a touchdown. Demarius Thomas had 6 receptions for 63 yards and a touchdown. Huge games for the, those two receivers there. And then on the defensive side of the ball for the Seahawks, well, Frank Clark had a sack, and that was about it for their pass rush. They were really getting to the quarterback. They only had that one sack. Um... Well, besides that, you have an interception by Earl Thomas and two interceptions by Bradley McDougald. Um, two really good safeties, especially Earl Thomas, one of the best in the league still, in my opinion. And then the Broncos defense, one of the best in the league. You had Shaquille Barrett going in for a sack. Rookie B Bradley Chubb with a half sack. Chris Harris with a sack, Von Miller getting six tackles, two forced fumbles, and three sacks, and Darian Stewart with half a sack. Justin Simmons had an interception, and Adam Jones had an interception. Um, this Broncos defense just ate Seattle up, causing the Broncos to win in a close one. Panthers pulled out a really, not a big win I guess, but a win. 16-8, they beat the Cowboys, and the Cowboys' offense just played horrible. The offensive line wasn't doing its job, missing 
all-star pro bowler offensive lineman Travis Fre Frederick. Dak Prescott couldn't do anything, only throwing for 170 yards, getting sacked six times and fum losing a fumble. Ezekiel Elliott getting 15 attempts for 69 yards and a touchdown. They just couldn't do it. The two, the power duo on the offense couldn't do it. Um, Cole Beasley was the only receiver who really showed anything with seven receptions for 73 yards. Um, Alan Hearns only had one for 20, which I expected a lot more out of him. Cam Newton, 161 yards, got sacked three times, and then he had a rushing touchdown. Christian McCaffrey played pretty okay. I mean, 10 carries for 50 yards, that's pretty good, but he did fumble it. He also had six receptions for 45 yards. Um, really the only offensive weapon that was showing anything for the Panthers, too. It's really just a defensive showdown for this one also, as both offenses played horrible. Um, for the Cowboys' defense, you had Jadobi Awuzi getting a four tackles and a forced fumble, Malik Collins with a sack, Demarcus Lawrence with six tackles, a fumble recovery, and a sack. And Daniel Ross with a forced fumble. And Jalen Smith with a sack. And we're going to look at the Panthers defense. Where <clears throat> a forced fumble from Mario Addison. And a fumble recovery by Captain Moonerlin. And you also had guys like Kawan Short getting two sacks. Shaq Thompson getting five tackles and a sack. And Wes Horton getting one and a half sacks. Oh yeah, and not only did Mario Addison get that forced fumble, he also had one and a half sacks in this one. The Panthers defense came to play, and it really surprised me. I didn't think the Panthers defense was this good. But was it really the Panthers defense, or was it the Cowboys offense playing that bad? 24-6. Alex Smith played amazing, which I expected. 21 for 30, 255 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. But he also got sacked three times and fumbled it twice, but didn't lose them, thankfully. Adrian Peterson, getting 26 carries for 96 yards and a touchdown. Is Adrian Peterson back? Also getting two receptions for 70 yards. Chris Thompson, one of the other running backs, getting five carries for 65 yards. And then six receptions, 63 yards, and a touchdown. He also played amazingly. So the running back duo there, and Adrian Peterson and Chris Thompson. Cardinals offense did nothing. Sam Bradford um, throwing a pick and fumbling it and losing that fumble. David Johnson getting nine carries, 37 yards, and a touchdown. Not really sure why he didn't run it more. Got five receptions for 30 yards. He didn't really get any yardage in this game, which was really surprising to me. Larry Fitzgerald getting 7 receptions for 76 yards. And then we look at the defense here. The Redskins defense, which I knew was going to be pretty good. Matthew Iadonis getting a sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery. Ryan Anderson getting a sack. An interception for Quentin Dunbar. And what else do we have here? That's about it. I guess 5 tackles for DJ Swearinger. And then, now let's take a look at the other team's defense, the Cardinals' defense. And they did lose a lot of talent this year. Trey Boston getting five tackles on a forced fumble. Chandler Jones getting a sack and a forced fumble. Robert Kemadice getting a sack. Patrick Peterson getting a sack. And yeah, they played, they played okay, but... Not nearly as good as the Redskins did. Um, it just really surprised me how bad the Cardinals offense played. I really expected them to do better. Um, Sam Bradford is a better quarterback. Josh Rosen is a better quarterback than Carson Palmer. And then you have Larry Fitzgerald and David Johnson. Really surprising that they did that bad. One, the Chicago Bears traveling to Green Bay. Um... Let's look at this. The Bears had a 20-3 to lead going into the third quarter. Aaron Rodgers coming back from injury. And he brings the Packers back in the fourth quarter 
making it 24 to 23. The biggest deficit in Green Bay history, where Green Bay is going into the fourth quarter. That is the most they've ever been down and came back to win it. Um, just huge. Aaron Rodgers proving more why he's the GOAT. Trubisky having a pretty good game, throwing for 171 yards. Surprisingly got sacked four times. Fumbling it twice, but losing one, only one of them. He ran in a touchdown. And then the amazing running game the Bears have. Jordan Howard getting 82 yards and Tariq Cohen 25. And they both each got some receiving yards. Um, Allen Robinson had four receptions for 61 yards. That was really... Um, I guess Taylor Gabriel getting five receptions for 25. And the Packers offense, Aaron Rodgers... Throwing 20 for 30, 286 yards, 3 touchdowns, getting sacked twice, and a 15-yard carry. Um, Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback in the NFL today. And when he got injured, the backup Deshaun Kaiser went in, and he was horrendous. He literally handed it off to Khalil Mack, and then he threw an interception right to Khalil Mack. It was horrible. I'm so glad Kaiser was only in for a couple of plays. He also got sacked twice, and he was only in for a quarter. Aaron Rodgers got sacked twice for being in three quarters, and Rodgers was injured. So that's how bad Kaiser is, and I made a whole video on why they should have kept Hundley, but they didn't. And that's not the point here. Randall Cobb showing off, getting nine receptions, 142 yards, and a touchdown. Devontae Adams, five receptions, 88 yards, and a touchdown. And Geronimo Allison, five receptions, 69 yards, and a touchdown. There wasn't much of a run game for Green Bay. Um, no running back really did anything that good. Ty Montgomery, Montgomery got two receptions for 21 yards. And he only got two carries, but he only got seven yards out of that. The Bears' defense was phenomenal. Um, they were just so damn good. Akeem Hicks getting a set, three tackles, a sack, and a forced fumble. Khalil Mack, I don't know about him. Two tackles, a forced fumble, a fumble recovery, a touchdown. Did I mention this? A sack and an interception. Um, he's too good. Too good in my opinion. Roy Robertson Harris with a sack. Rookie Roquan Smith. The first play of his NFL career, he got a sack. Danny Trevathan with five tackles as well. Then we take a look at the Packers defense. Kentrell Bryce. He is so such a good safety. Getting eight tackles and a sack. He was hitting hard. Mike Daniels getting three tackles and a sack. Nick Perry getting four tackles. A sack and a forced fumble. And then we also have... Kenny Clark with the fumble recovery. Clinton Dix got seven tackles. And Blake Martinez got six. I actually thought he got more than that. But a really impressive game here by Green Bay. Um, I just can't believe they made that fourth quarter comeback. Everyone, they shocked everybody on national television. And the thing that shocks me the most... The Packers almost um, lost the game on multiple occasions. Bears had so many chances to win. To win, They had the ball in the last two minutes, and they still couldn't pull it off. Clay Matthews making boneheaded decisions. He was just horrible in this game. I think Clay Matthews actually hurts this Packers defense more than he helps. And there we go. Packers pulling off the win there. A very scary game as Rodgers got carted off. And then he just came back to pull off a game winner.